Well, there you are again. Charlie Greer podcast. I do this every day. Today, we're going to talk about the Wonderland murders. <laughs> the Wonderland murders. Um, cast a character, John Holmes, the porn star, uh, Eddie Nash, the club owner, uh, robbery, uh, drugs. It's It's got it all. So Wonderland, that was it was a house on uh, well, how can we how should we even start? Like, okay, John Holmes, big huge porn star guy, 70s, 80s. Um, like the Elvis of porn back then. Um, but he got, you know, he was on drugs. It was the 70s and 80s. This happened in 1981. So he was addicted to that free basing, like everybody was doing blow. He was just out of his mind. Eddie Nash, the guy he robbed. Uh, was a nightclub owner. So let's just tell the story. So uh, uh, Eddie Nash is this dude that is like a jefe, a shot caller, like a guy who owns clubs. He owns a lot of um, liquor licenses. So people have to, you know, he buys up all the liquor licenses. So even the clubs, on Eddie Nash owns the liquor license. Um, also, he kept a lot of drugs around. Um. John Holmes, the porn star, knew Eddie, would go there for people and pick up, like, large amounts of uh, drugs. And then uh, John knew these people on Wonderland Avenue, which is in Laurel Canyon, L.A., which is kind of a hippie, kind of bohemian. It's it's, it's weird, that little area. Um, it's off of Crescent Heights. Like, when you're going down Sunset, I think it's Crescent Heights. The Crescent Heights take you through the mountain. You can, you don't have to get on the highway and go over and you're the valley. I think you end up in, like, Studio City. It's a windy road. And, of course, in, in Laurel Canyon, there's, like, the country store there. And there's a little this and that. And the doors and the birds. And, oh, shit. Neil Young. Um, so, Wonderland. The, the house on, was on Wonderland Avenue. John Holmes knew these people. There was four people work, uh, living at Wonderland. And, of course, some of you guys know about this. The Wonderland, uh, the movie star in a, um, what's his face? <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, the people at the Wonderland Avenue house set up, went, sent John to go there to get some drugs, leave a door open at Eddie Nash's house so they could come back later and rob Eddie Nash. And his, you know, he had security and stuff. It was like a thing, you know. And they did. They went and robbed Eddie Nash. Of course, a guy like Eddie Nash and his like street, like security are going to know right off the bat. You know, they're going to, are you kidding me? Who was the last one here? Who's the most sketchy? John Holmes. Uh, go get him. So they got him. Because um, Eddie Nash ain't the kind of guy that's going to call the cops. You know, he's going to. What are you going to say? Oh, by the way, I got robbed. They stole like, you know, kilos of cocaine and all my money and gold. No. You're going to, you know, you're going to send your, you know, people. So that's what he did. They got John, beat him till he told him what's going on. Made John go to the Wonderland house. And then they went and bludgeoned four people to death. On the the revenge from Eddie Nash saying, hey, go get these people. And they did. It was brutal. And John, they made John Holmes, the porn star, be involved. Like, hey, you're going to get your hands dirty kind of thing. Um, and <laughs> went back. And, of course, the cops, they figured this out. And eventually, Eddie actually admitted, like, he he uh, got a sentence out of it, but not much time, I don't think. Maybe it was even probation. But he finally admitted, like, okay. You know, it was the 80s. I, this is years later, maybe in the 90s. When it was uh, but it was a big, big deal. Um, John Holmes, unfortunately, you know, he died of uh, AIDS. He was he lived a hard life. He, you know, he got into thing, you know, shit. He basically became a drug, uh, a, ro a robber, like a drug robber, shit, a thief. Now, Eddie Nash, the guy that sent the people to Wonderland, had been around L.A. for a long time and literally like worked hard to get where he was at. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know. And he passed in like 2014, like about 10 years ago or something. Uh, but he started like with a hot dog cart or something. 
Like he started like on the street, like hot dog, you know, did well there, bought another hot dog, you know, or whatever he was selling. Maybe it wasn't hot dogs. Maybe it was falafel. I don't know. But he was one of those guys, vendors, and then he bought another and then another. And then you have like 10 of them out there. And then you got enough money. You start buying like liquor licenses. He was smart enough to be like, hey, they only issue so many in this certain area. I'll just buy them all up. And um, he owned the, the Odyssey, the Starwood. These are old clubs that are gone now. And he, um, he, he was making bank. I mean, he was, uh, how many clubs? I might have three or more. And probably that's what they knew about. And, uh, and just in probably owning a liquor license, you had to deal with Eddie Nash. Like, hey, you got to use my liquor license. You guys can run the club. Pay me that bit. You know, that's what was probably going on. And it took him forever to get... John Holmes got arrested for this. Like, it was a thing. He turned evidence on the uh, one of Eddie Nash's. I don't know if they tried him together. I think they tried Eddie Nash's, like, head of security first and then Eddie. Because it took a long years. And then Eddie kind of pleaded out. He, he could afford, like, all these big-time attorneys, you know. So, yeah, he got off light. Maybe he only had to do probation. Maybe he did a couple of years. I don't know. House arrest. Who knows? But he didn't go to, you know, four people over drugs. And again, Eddie Nash was, uh, he know shit. If you started, when did he start? Like in the 40s, 50s on the streets of LA, like doing that, you kind of get juiced in, connected. And then you start getting money. Well, hell, you know those streets. You know, you, you're, you're the mayor and the sheriff kind of thing on the street anyways. Um, that's the kind of, can you imagine that? Just send out your killers, basically. Just to, not even, I mean, and everybody knew, even the cops knew. They're like, damn, you know, shit gets around. These people are informants. They knew about Eddie Nash. You know, there's, you can pay and donate money to, you know. And John Holmes, he was like the king of porn. What did he do with all that money? Like, didn't he, I mean, uh, stash a little away for a rainy day or something? Did he, I mean, shit, you'd think he'd have like a big house and his own production company, whatever. None of that. Maybe drugs. I was watching, people say he wasn't like the smartest tool in the shed, if you get what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe he was a little few short uh, fries of a, you know, happy meal. I don't know. He, but. And then at the, right around that time, he was doing like odd jobs. Like, okay, you're king of porn. You're doing odd jobs. Then he went, he got into like, you know, he was the king of porn. And he started doing like, I don't know, like porn where they don't test or whatever. I don't even know if they were testing back then. But he got HIV and eventually got AIDS and he died. Uh, and that area, the Wonderland Avenue and, and Laurel Canyon, it is strange. I don't know. Like there's these hippie people and people move there. And it is, it's expensive. I never, I lived in LA 24 years. I never lived in the Laurel Canyon area just because, uh, I mean, it's expensive for like, there's, and you gotta, it, it's a long ways from everything. You're not in the woods, basically. Now, if you have money in a pimping place, but like the places I could afford, no. And I don't want to live in a house with a bunch of hippies, you know. But there's that general store there, uh, right before you go up, you know, Laurel Canyon. I mean, uh, is it Laurel Canyon? Is it Lookout Mountain? One of those. It is Laurel Canyon because it's Lookout Mountain, Laurel Canyon. So I've been there. I've been to parties. I've been to people's houses. Strange, though. Once you start going up Laurel Canyon, you're going up, 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 up. And that's where they had the uh, the biggest movie studio. It wasn't in Hollywood. It was on the top of that mountain there. Um, huge. And it was owned by, like, the government, the CIA or something. And it was secret. Nobody really, I mean, people knew. But it wasn't like, hey, and what were they needing a big studio, the biggest studio? Why would they need all that to, uh, you know, what, fake the moon landing or some shit? I don't know. Even stranger when they, oh, we don't need it anymore. Uh, the actor, Jared Leto, bought it. Who can afford a, I guess he's got money. Shit. Fucking buy a studio. Turned it into a house, a big house, I guess. Uh, but it's strange up there. I had one of the weirdest things happen to me, like, um.
this is like 98, 99. I was using, I was looking for a guitar amp. I was using a recycler. I was in band. So I got, this is before there was the internet, but I, I was reading the recycler where people used to post stuff. This is when people would like post stuff in the newspaper, or this little pamphlet, the recycler, like a little thing they gave away for free. And I found this guy moving out of town, you know, that LA story, moved to LA, being a rock star. Now he wants to cut, head out selling stuff cheap. So he was selling a Fender Hot Rod DeVille uh, combo, which has got like four 10 inch speakers. It's three channels, two big, heavy thing. Um, it was like 98, 99. So it was like $300, maybe even $200. I was like, cool. That's what I so call him, set it up, go up there. And then there's traffic off. Once you get on Laurel Canyon, there's people. And then you start going up and down those. So he lit, I'd never been that deep. It took me like 20 minutes, a half an hour to get where I was going. And then it was the weirdest house. Like you park and then there's a fence and then he opened the fence and there's a stairwell. You can't even see the house from this. There's foliage and trees and open that fence, walk down. And then I guess this house is like hanging off the mountain. I don't even know. Like what the fuck? And of course there were hippies, man. You know, like, Hey, like rich. You think a lot of these people, they look, they're, they're rich people, but they're, you know, you know, patchouli. And he told me a story. Yeah. He'd been living there for free. Like, yeah, my mom's friend let me come stay. Now I got eight up in LA. I've been here a year. I'm leaving. I want to go and I need money. So, uh, I met that her and it, yeah, everybody was cool. And I tried out the amp, bought it, took it back to my car. And as I'm going down again, this was a, it was sunny, but it was like 72 degrees, like a perfect LA day. Not hot. Just, you know, everything's cool. And I felt creepy. I felt the creepiness start when I was driving up there. Just like, damn, there's no, you can see the houses and stuff. And sometimes they're in a the house. There's just, you're, you know, uh, I'd never been that high up there. Well, like, Dad, I didn't know this existed. Like, where in the hell am I at? It might as well be in fucking Georgia, you know, in the mountains somewhere. So I'm coming down the mountain, and um, I just start feeling like disoriented, uh, hot, nauseous, like weird. And I had to get down the – and there's no, like, off, you know. <laughs> You're just, you got to, you know – uh. So much so, I took off my shoes. My feet got so hot. I took off my shoes, took off my socks, took off my shirt. Like, I was sweating, freaking out. I had to pull over. Finally found a place to pull over. And, like, sat there. And people actually come, are you okay? And I literally, like, got in my back seat and, like, laid down. I thought I was freaking out. Um, I've never – I felt like it, – it, it felt like I was being watched or – I don't even know. Like, something was going on. So – Come to get my car, get home. By the time I got down to Crescent Heights and back into Hollywood, probably it was I was fine. Like, what in the hell? You know, what was that? So it's like 98, 99, got my aunt back in the house and everything was fine. It went to like years later that I watched like David Politis and he talked about these missing people and how they always have their shoes off and their socks and they take off their clothes. It's like, damn, that's because I kind of looked at like what happened to me? What did I is there some kind of like because Laurel Canyon has always been known as a weird, it's just weird up there. There's weird shit. There's just weird bands. There's everything, you know, it's all, it's always been that way. It, it, it attracts to certain, you know, so it's no wonder the wonderlands, of course, there's going to be, uh, and there was more, they just, the spotlight was on the wonderland murder because it involved John Holmes, a porn star and Eddie Nash, the king of LA. Again, this was in 1981, like the peak, probably drug, you know, there was still free love going around. There was still, you know, of course, there's always been crime. But yeah, when I, I found out about David Politis, about the missing people, that's what they, happens when people are like, they go missing. I was like, what the, huh? And how would I, I know it sounds crazy, but how would I go miss if I'm in my car? Like, again, I felt like I was being chased or something was, I don't even know. I, it, it, in the nausea and the hot, I've never had anything like that. My feet being so hot, like I've never, as I was driving, going on these curves, like for some reason, I had to take my shoes and socks off. I don't even know. Like I've never done that. Like what am I doing as I'm doing it? And then you got shoes and socks down by your, did I have a stick shift too? It was crazy. I mean, and I've been, again, that area and people in Laurel Canyon. So, like, when you're in L.A. and you run into kind of, like, weird people, and they're like, oh, I live in Laurel Canyon. Like, of course you do. Of course. 
You live in Lower Canyon. And why would like okay, say if you're Eddie Nash and you you you're probably a millionaire by then. Of course, duh, you got all these clubs. And someone rips you off. Is it just the drug mania? Why would you want to bring the heat? You know, okay, that's what happens when you're in that world. Shit hat, you get robbed. Lucky they didn't kill you. Um, why wouldn't you just take that as a loss? Like, oh, well, you know, same. Unless you run in those certain circles where, like, people know, man, if you don't put the hammer down and let people, they'll, 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 you can't, you know, you got to make an example. Like, you got to do something. That's a criminal world, you know? Like, you just can't be like, oh, well, I'll just write it off. No. You got to send Nug Nug in them or whoever, you know? You got to, um, you know, that's the street. That's that's criminality. Because then he won't be able to, you know, he'll get robbed again the next night. Hey, we can rob Eddie Nat. No, he, <laughs> nah. Um, or just I, again, I I don't live in that world. Never have. Never even visited that kind of power structure. Criminal. Don't know. But you would think that like wouldn't you? Wouldn't there be a bottom? Like okay, this is okay. I need to pull it back. Um, maybe you know, no, just kick you know, kick it in a notch, I guess, and just be. And he was older by then, too. I mean, I don't know. People are mentally ill, psychopaths, narciss narcissists, sociopath, you know. Um, but you would think as public as he was, I mean, the business kind of guy, you uh, is it drugs that kind of lead you down that? I mean, it kind of like uh, John Holmes, again, in his world, the porn world, he was a star. Like, why would you not? Is it self uh, sabotage? Do people just like, without even knowing, like, you know, subconsciously just want to fail, you know? Is that what it is? But well, don't you think that John Holmes would be like, look, I've, I've gotten to this certain point. Let me start my own little production company. I'll, I'll team with a distributor to do my thing and just like rent up, I mean, buy a lot out, out the porn at Valley and, and, you know, in LA and just shoot your own porn and live where you lie, have a pool, you know, good times. But no, I'm just going to like burn through everything and <laughs> rip people off. I mean, uh, and who these four people in John Holmes, how high do you have to be? Or, yeah, man, let's do it. Like, they're not going to get away. And they were kind of bragging. Like, are you not? Are you, huh? Don't you have any foresight? Like, don't you? you uh, action, reaction, just like simple things. Like, you just don't. You know there's gonna be retribution. I mean, it's not gonna. It's L.A. retribution too. Um, they just went back to the house and party. Like, woo! They didn't even leave. I mean, that's just to me. Again, it seems like everybody in this case seemed like it's just maybe it's drugs. I've never free based, so I don't know. Maybe you just kind of get out of your mind. Cox, you you, you just goo -goo, you know you're gone. It take you a month to sober up in a rehabilitation just to be like, oh my God, I was, I was, I don't, is that what it is? Or is it just like evil? Just like, ah, I'm gonna, or mean, or whatever you want to call that. Uh, I don't get what people, is there, no, I mean, success, is there, are you happy? I guess not. I mean, shit. Pardon me. Like, huh? Like, why, why Why would you? Can't you just chill a bit? <laughs> Lay on your path a bunch of money that you've had. Because at, at, at Eddie Nash's, he literally had like a, it was in the floor. Like, he pulled this thing up. This is full of, you know. Um, in the movie, they claim that after they robbed him, before, before they left, when the guy turns back around and goes, yeah, uh, John Holmes says, Hello. Like, would you want to snitch yourself out like that? I mean, the movie, that's what happens. And they know it automatically, like, John was just here. Again, they would probably know John went into the kitchen. He left that door open. Again, if you're around that world, you know, you can smell this. Thing. You just, what do you mean? You think you're going to wrap me up? I would recommend watching The Wonderland. It's called Wonderland. Val Kilmer's in it. He's awesome. 
uh, great movie. I mean, it's dark. I mean, it's, but uh, they nailed it. And he literally, I mean, John Holmes was literally like living out of a van with some girl. I mean, I don't, I don't made her stay in the van. It's crazy. Like by the time you're John Holmes, you're like a celebrity. You've been to every party. Um, is your business sense that bad or do you just like, are you social skills so bad? I mean, I don't get it. You get to this point, everybody knows who you are. You're the king. And then, nope, I don't want that. I'm just going to run wild and mental illness. Maybe a mixture of a lot of that. Again, the uh, that area, Laurel Canyon, is known. It's creepy, man. It's it's it's, it's <clears throat> again. It's got this like kind of bohemian, you know. Uh, there's only one store, that country store that's been there forever. The Doors used to live like kind of right behind there, and I think that the it caught on fire, but they kept it how Jim had written um, lyrics and art, Jim Morrison, that is, of the doors, on the walls in this apartment they used to have. And it used to be they kept it that way. Um, but I know there was a fire. I don't know how much burnt. But I would give it chances. Again, I lived in L.A. for 24 years. Like, you know what? Let me go down. You know, I'll, I'll go to the country to see what's going on. There's a coffee shop there. Let's hang out. It was always, I don't know. At best, it was just rich kids not bathing, wearing patchouli, trying to act like hippies or something like that. And, then, you know, acoustic guitar. Kind of, oh, I love the birds. And I do, too. But, I mean, uh, um, or just, I don't know. It, it was just strange. And anytime I went to, there was a few times I went to parties up there. And, of course, I get invited. I really don't know anybody. And then there's, in L.A., there's these groups of everybody at the park. You know, you just kind of walk around a few times. I'll say, nah, they're gone. Tapestries hanging around, hippie shit. And it didn't seem like, I mean, I wasn't in that world, but it didn't seem like they were go-getters. Like, I would, uh, you know, they talk about a gig, and then they play at the coffee shop. It's like, yeah, I guess, I mean, that coffee shop, you know, it's a little P.A., you know, why don't you hit the clubs? Like, shit, let's go play the Mint or one of those younger, you know, littler clubs. Um, fucking Raji's or something. But <laughs> the Coconut Teaser, if you will. Because the Coconut Teaser was right on the corner there. Uh, Coconut Teaser was a club for, in the 80s, it was like a glam, you know, woo, like big hair. Even in 98, 99, they still would have like, people were still doing that glam thing, that hair rock. Um, and they'd have like a night. So we'd be like, the last time I went to the Coconut Tea, it was like on one of those nights, like maybe 98, 99. There was like five bands, each played like a half an hour. And they were all like uh, glam, like poison or, you know. And they, they were, it was funny how horrible they were. And they all had all this great gear and all this stuff. Again, that area is strange. Um, and there was people that like, again, you're if you're in that community, you live in like Laurel Canyon, you know, you, scan it, you know that that's your world. And they just kind of like gravitate. It's like the the board or something. So when you're out in L.A. proper Hollywood, you're seeing all these people, and a lot of people from L.A. aren't from L.A. You know, I'm from Montreal, I'm from Cincinnati, I'm from this, I'm that, I'm from Atlanta, I'm, you know, everybody. And so people like congregate, like say Laurel Canyon is that hippie kind of rich people, kids or whatever. Then the Hollywood sunset is, is uh, you know, sleazy Guns N' Roses fan people that this is back then. Living in a warehouse, you know, there'll be like a those rehearsal rooms in Hollywood. They said they'll live there like they did shit. Well, there's one guy, they right off sunset, this like old uh, rehearsal room, wasn't that big, it was a bunch of them, but it wasn't as big, like <clears throat> there were hundreds. 
And these guys would always, yeah, Charlie, come on, man. We're having another gig. We're having a private park. Beers. I said, I never went. I was like, ah, oh, see, I, maybe I'll. It just, I know. <laughs> that was like in 2004, 2005. There were still like hair people, rock and roll. Now I'm sure all that's gone. Um, but the Wonderland, that area, matter of fact, matter of fact I, last time I was watching the uh, something about Wonderland, they were doing a uh, like a podcaster guy was out there. They came out, people that are living there now, and like told him to shut off his camera. And he was like, "Hey, it's it's legal to be on this. I'm not doing it." Ah, they kind of, it's strange around there. And I get it if you live in that. It looks the same if you live in that. You want to live there when all that shit went down, but it lived there. It looks the same. I get that every day people are bloggers or uh, YouTubers are pointing the camera. Uh, you might kind of lose your shit. And just that how br the brutality of it all. And then Eddie Nash would be like, well, I'm a rich guy. I can afford this and that. And they, he did. He strung along that case for a long time. I think John Holmes uh, again, turned state's evidence. I'm pretty sure he did against Eddie and those, his security team that he sent, the dudes that he sent to uh, do the duty, the dirty, I should say. Uh, yeah, four people dead, bludgeoned. And then Eddie basically got, I think everybody kind of got a slap on the wrist. Like, ah, don't do that again. Five years, you do like 18 months, two years, you're out. Uh, maybe not. Maybe one of them got like more, I don't know. Um uh, but people in L.A. kind of lose their mind. Um, and those four people and John who thought they could get away with uh, Robin, Eddie Nash. I mean, that's not a uh, that's not a good career move. <laughs> There's no uh, sustainability in that kind of lifestyle, like especially if you're dumb about it, like you don't have any kind of diversion tactic or anything. You just went there, did it. You're in straight home. Woo! Start partying for it now. Were they that out of it and delusional that they thought, no, we'll never be caught? That's another thing. Dumb criminals. Nobody deserves to be killed, but. And how brutal it, they made John Holmes participate. So he got them into the uh, Eddie Nash's house. And later on that night, when they came back to, or whenever they came back to do the, you know, revenge killings. He went in first and like left the gate. He let them in, you know, both times at the crime. And then at that, that's his shit. That's um, maybe he was in fear of his life by that. I don't know. That's what he was claiming. Like, they're going to kill me. I had to. What about the first time when they got, I don't know. And they act like John in the movie, the, the Wonderland movie. Go watch it. They act like he's kind of a, just a burnout kind of, you know, past his time. Maybe he was. I can't imagine that he um, would burn that many bridges because there's a lot of money in porn. I don't want to be, I'd never be in porn, but they, you know, he was John Holmes. Maybe you guys don't remember John Holmes, but he was huge. Like maybe the first big male porn star. Like, he, he was, <laughs> shit. There'll never be another one, man. I mean, he... <laughs> Those, uh, because back then, old dude, like haggard looking guys, did porn. Um, because he looked haggard, like he looks kind of sleazy. John Holmes does. Uh, again, he should have saved a little bit of money and like started his own production. I don't know, did his own thing. But this today, when I'm doing the, uh, I was somebody gave me a request, so I ran it. Hey, they're getting notices on my, uh, my podcast. Yeah, I'm getting the notices on my phone for your podcast. Cool. Well, you ever think about doing the Wonderland murders? I was like, you know what? I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. So shout out to them. Um, I do this every day. I'm renting like a madman all over the place. Uh, so I'll be back tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great day. I love y'all. Be blessed.
Cheers.